Hey, what's going on guys? Timsey here and welcome back to episode three of our solo queue to champ series. Now, I'm not going to lie, I had a little bit of a setback with some of the games I played, but either way, we're still in that plat three to plat two elo range and I have a pretty good game on Villa for you guys. But with that being said, question of the day. I don't know if this video is going up before or after Christmas, so what are you looking forward to or what did you get for Christmas? Let me know down in the comments below, but anyways, let's jump right into it. So as I said in the intro, I hit a little bit of a rough patch the last couple games. It was a lot of winning a game, losing a game, but I was losing more than I was gaining. So overall, I was losing elo and I ended up almost going and dropping down to gold one. I ended up keeping the plat three and I actually built my way up to plat two again. And I was trying to get a couple games into plat two for this video, but I started losing a couple and it was just kind of rough. But we have a pretty good game on a villa for you guys. It's a pretty quick one and it does showcase a couple nice uh kind of clutches or just 1v1 situations that you should kind of play out but with that being said let me know what type of matches you want to see or type of videos for the solo queue series that you'd like to see if you guys would like to see specific maps possibly i can try to do those but more importantly i want to showcase obviously matches that i'm performing well but i want them to also be as educational as possible to kind of give you guys a better understanding of some of the things that you can try out when you're solo queuing or at least some of the things that you need to look out for when you're solo queuing so we have defense on Villa, which is a huge bonus. Attacking on this map is a little hit or miss. It's kind of hard to attack, especially solo queuing, because just all of the possibilities of things that may happen. But with that being said, we have defense first, so this is a solid start. So you have the typical Thatcher ban and the typical Jackal ban. So the bands you want to look out for is primarily going to be on the defensive side. You're going to want to get rid of the Cade, Mira, or Valkyrie, typically in this case. They end up going for the Mira, I believe. Which, Mira is just really strong on at least two of the three sites, uh, if not all three of the primary sites that are played. And then the Valkyrie, of course, there's so many Valkyrie spots. But in this case, I wanted to go for the Cade, because we did have defense first. I guess, I don't know. We could have kept the Valk up or the Cade up, but my teammates wanted to go for the Clash Band, which is interesting. Um, but either way, Shouldn't be a problem. I think it's good to have the Valk on defense, considering we have defense first, so we can take advantage of it, have a lot of info, and try to secure as many of these rounds that we have on defense that we can. So with that being said, I'm going to stick the Valk just because I want to get some info. That's the main thing that I like to do when it, when it comes to solo queuing. I want to play info ops on defense. Uh, typically the Valk, if she is available. If not, I try to play somewhat near the site. But with the Valkyrie, I'm just able to give a lot of info around the objective to my teammates. So I can at least communicate, give callouts. My teammates can hopefully react to my callouts because that's just kind of one thing that you need to look out for. Calling out in, in solo queue is a little hit or miss. Just a quick reminder, if you guys enjoyed this solo to champ series, make sure to leave a like in the video and hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you guys haven't done so already. But anyways, let's jump back into the video. All 10 walls on a coastline game as Cade. It wasn't too bad, I got done at like 25 seconds into the round, but either way, the first game I'm going to throw is going to be Bookshelf, and this is actually a pretty sneaky one that you can put if you break the actual panel of the cabinet here and kind of throw it into the bottom left corner. You can get some really good info down 90, but you can also hear top main stairs. And then our second cam is going to go top red, because this is going to be the main ways of entry from the attackers, typically, if they're going to be pushing red or if they're going to be pushing study side. In this case, I have a little bit of trouble getting this Valk cam exactly where I want it. Uh, but honestly, up in the chandelier is a really good spot as well. You guys will see me put a Valk cam up there as well, because that's just overall probably the, one of the best spots. But it's so common that people look for it, so I wanted to do a little bit of a different camera. So I hear a lot of shots on the master side of the map. I see the Jaeger kind of playing a little bit aggressive on the master door. So I kind of want to play off his contact. He ends up going towards Astro to bathroom or peek the bathroom door. So I want to play a little bit passive. I don't want to really overextend peek and die while my Jaeger's over by bathroom. So I'm going to just kind of play a little bit of passive while I'm waiting for Jaeger to kind of rotate. He rotates into trophy. 
And I'm just going to hold the bathroom door from this pixel. This is a really safe angle to hold because you can kind of see them. You can maybe hit some shots, get a kill, but you ultimately can run away. So my entire team is deciding to swing. So I took the initiative just to go back to site. Um, you know, I saw the Thunderbird swing. I saw the Mozzie swing. So I'm just going to go ahead and hop on cams. It ends up already being a 5v1. But, you know, these rounds kind of happen. I wanted to make sure that I got back to site just in case my teammates got completely destroyed while they were trying to play super, super aggressive. I guess I could have stayed there and, and played aggressive as well, maybe got a kill, but that's not really the goal of this as, as much as uh, just kind of getting around. So I would say the Valk worked that round. I mean, it did, but at the same time, they really didn't get past Master. So I'm going to run the Valk again on the Statue and Trophy objective. Just because there's some good cams you can get inside of Master and Top Red, of course. And then, you know, I have a Nitro, so I can go downstairs and potentially go for a Nitro down below if they do end up pushing Master. So overall, Valk is a pretty solid pick. Another thing you want to look out for is making sure you can make rotates. Now, if you're not playing somebody with impacts or a shotgun, like in this case, I'm playing the Valkyrie, you want to make sure your other teammates have some way to make rotates. So I'm going to go ahead and reinforce all of the closet to bathroom walls, but in this case we have the two impacts from Vigil and I think the Thunderbird might have impacts, I'm not too sure, but either way I want to reinforce all of these bathroom walls because it's kind of annoying to get wall banged from closet through to bathroom into Astro. And I want to make them actually open up this wall if they have a hard breacher. They have to hard breach it open in order to get any deeper line of sight from closet through bathroom. So I'm going to throw my second cam into the plants, or I guess next to the plants there. That second cam actually is pretty bad, but this third cam is good. The one on the channel alert top red stairs. You can see red stairs, but more importantly down 90 as well. And in this case, I'm going to play downstairs because we have the Valk cam in Master, we have the red cam, so we can kind of play downstairs, we can rotate up Astro or rotate up Red if we need to, if we need to ro rotate back to the site. I do see that I have a Mozzie and a Vigil roaming, so there's only two on site, so I want to play close to the objective. In this case, I can just kind of run up Astro stairs if need be, and as I said, that second Valk cam is pretty bad. Now in this case, I'm just going to play my cams. I don't really hear anything, I don't hear any repels around Master. So I don't really know what to look for. Um, there are some shots going off on the other side of the map. The Mozzie is shooting, so I, you know, it kind of indicates that they're probably pushing study side. So I'm just going to be on cams here and just kind of chill out and wait because I don't really have to do anything. You know, we're on defense. I'm going to start rotating to make sure nobody's kind of crab walking or, or, you know, crouch walking their way through laundry. But one of our site players ends up dying, so I'm going to immediately rotate up the Astro stairs and make it back to the objective because now at this point it's only the Jaeger. We're in a 4v4 situation and I'm just going to kind of play off this Jaeger's contact and kind of wait with him. He gets a pick top red and then they get the refrag on the Mozzie. I'm going to open up a pretty good line of sight. This allows me to see down to the bottom red stairs, but more importantly I can peek both the board door as well as the statue door. In a 2v3, the Vigil gets a a good pick and he's sitting inside of 90 so I want to watch his top red in this case he dies 90 so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of rotate my line of sight I'm gonna hold the 90 angle I get a pick there in, in 1v1 situation and in this case I don't know where this guy is I'm just trying to listen he starts shooting on the study side of the map so I'm just gonna go out and heal up because I really I have a whole lot of time he has a whole minute and 10 seconds so I'm just gonna kind of wait make him make the play make some noise and in the meantime, I can kind of just heal while I'm sitting in the objective. I scoop up the last heal when I hear that this guy is 90. And the clutch. So those guys kind of gave me isolated 1v1s. Uh, the first Gut fight was a, a little risky. I, I kind of overswung and exposed a lot of, of my body while peeking that same angle. If you kind of hold a tighter angle, you'll probably win the gunfight um, easier, I guess. But with that being said, I still ended up winning the gunfight. I did get super lit, so thankfully we did have the Thunderbird, so I was able to heal up to 100% health. And I'm going to keep the Valk again just because the Valk has been working. I guess, it, you know, it worked last round, but I like the Valk. She's fun. As long as you hit headshots, because if not, the gun is a pea shooter. So we have to go to Kitchen Dining, which isn't too bad. We have a pretty similar lineup with the Malusi, the Vigil. We have a Mozzie again, a Jaeger, and the Valkyrie. 
So in this case, I'm going to throw a couple cams upstairs because that's just kind of where the info is. Or I, I guess we can, you know, nitro from down below to upstairs. Um, I don't really have too many cams for this objective, to be completely honest. Obviously, I want to throw a cam upstairs, but kind of getting cams around the site, I don't exactly have great ones. So if you guys do have some good cams for the site, definitely throw them because the ones I throw aren't great, but... With that being said, I'm going to make my way upstairs, and that second Valk cam that I threw in the previous round, I'm going to throw that same similar cam, but in this case, I'm not going to throw it behind all of the leaves of the plants. I'm going to get more line of sight onto the actual master room and closet, so I can see if I need to throw any nitros up top. So for this site, I just want to play in the objective. The Mozzie and the Vigil roamed last round, so it's safe to assume that they are roaming again, plus the Jaeger is playing upstairs. I do see that we didn't get the pantry wall, and I could probably get it right away, but I also don't want to get shot through the window. So I'm going to kind of play near pantry. Listen, the, the window is actually open already, and they are going to start droning. So in this case, off that drone, I'm going to start reinforcing just to try to get it while that guy is droning out pantry. So I'm able to get the reinforcement, which is really, really good. But either way, we're in a 5v5 situation. They have a lot of time. We don't exactly know where they're pushing. And like I said, the camps I have inside are pretty bad. But they're already on laundry door with the Osa. We're in a 3v5 now. So I'm trying to just stay alive. Realistically, I don't want them to push into the site. We're able to get two really good picks, and this guy is left by himself in the, the plant, or trying to plant. And in this case, I have no idea where the last guy is, so I'm just going to sit in the corner, watch one of my angles, and listen. So we hear this guy is inside of Memo, and honestly, the Mozzie is just swinging. The, the Mozzie is just going to keep swinging, and I take the responsibility of just trying to hold more of a passive angle, just kind of wait for the guy to peek into me, instead of trying to peek into the final guy. So I'm just going to sit and hold a passive angle onto the memo door from inside of kitchen. And you will see again, the mozzie, the mozzie's just swinging. The mozzie doesn't care. Which, you know, it, it's not really a, a big problem, but I get put into the 1v1 situation. I got to reposition considering I, you know, shot a few bullets. He knows exactly where I'm at, so I don't want to sit in the same exact spot that I was sitting in. And I looked for an opportunity to try to throw a Nitra up and over, but he was too far away. And we get the kill on this ledge. So yeah, you just gotta play a little bit passive. You know, there's no reason for you to swing them, or you just wait for them to swing you. Now you wanna hold an unpredictable angle, you don't wanna be holding a blatantly obvious common angle. So in that case, peeking through the rotate, through the door, into Memo was kind of the decision. Hopefully you guys don't hear my squeaky chair. Now, considering our defenses were pretty much just gunfights the entire time, I was debating on going like an ace or something, but I decided to bring the Yana just because... Man, this chair is crazy. Alright, so as I said, I was going to play the ace, but it seemed like it was just going to be a frag kind of game, considering our, how the defense went. I know we are Astralis R6, but make sure you guys check out the in-game store and get your hands on the Disrupt Gaming in-game weapon skins for the R4C, the LED5, and the two charms Why you still can. Anyways, let's get back into the video. So I thought it would just be a good idea to kind of go for the frags instead. So instead of bringing bring a hard breach and kind of trying to play it a little bit slower, we're going to keep the pace, we're going to keep the momentum going. So I'm going to go ahead and get a cam downstairs inside of Living. This is a pretty good cam that I like to place a lot, to be honest. It's just, it's good for most of the sites to be completely honest if you want to get living control or at least just know if there's anybody rotating through living because living in library is going to be one of the main ways they kind of rotate around the map um, besides going like towards piano side but in this case i actually kind of want to push living because i want to see if i can make a place somewhere if i can go up red stairs go up the main stairs or if i can go all the way through astro stairs and come up to statue and trophy and push 90 or something like that so you guys are more than Welcome to use this camp spot. There's another plant pot in living that is a pretty good spot to put your cam as well. It gets similar info for that room, but that's the one that I like to lose. Like to use. But keep an eye on the spawn peaks. Now I'm gonna like double and triple check before I enter in a room. I, I can't tell you how many times I solo queue and, and 
I just, there's a random person in some random corner in a room waiting for me to enter the, the window or the door that I'm entering in. So the Amaru is going to get into 90, or actually Boar window, get a pick top red, but then get immediately refragged. So now in a 4v4 situation, this guy tells me that he killed the guy top red. So I'm going to try to make a little bit of an aggressive quick play to go up towards red. I hear somebody close, so I'm going to start alt walking just to be a little bit quieter. And I hear there's a guy to my right near statue. So in a 4v2 situation, there's only one guy on site. So in this case, I'm just going to hold the person that is by statue. In this case, it ends up being a Jaeger. And I'm just going to wait. For now we're in a 4v1, my teammates can plant. And the Jaeger is just stuck. He can't really do anything. So pretty good game. Pretty quick. Uh, there was a couple good clutches in there. Just kind of play it slow when you're in a 1v1x situation. Um, try to isolate 1v1s. Don't really try to force a 1v2. If you can 1v1 the first guy and 1v1 the second guy, you're just winning two 1v1s instead of trying to win a 1v2, if you guys kind of look at it that way. But anyways, if you made it this far into the video and you enjoy the content that I post on the Astralis channel, make sure to check out my socials, which are on screen right now, if you guys want to see anything that I post. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did so, don't forget to leave a like on the video. And if you guys liked the video, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you guys don't miss a future video. And a reminder, if you guys have any requests on things that you'd like to see for the solo queue series, whether it's maps or, you know, play styles, if you guys want to see me lose a game, you know, um... You know, if there's a game that I lose and, and there's still some educational value that it has, I definitely won't mind posting that. But let me know what you guys want to see in the comments below. But anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace.